fam. You ain't ready for this. It's big money, big cars, big moves. This muscle tone, bra, there ain't nothing to prove. The best breeze from the states to the outback. Keep your eyes peeled, guaranteed you gon' learn that. Being stock, big boss on lock. If a cane one was God, it would be this dog. So you all think you have an extreme American bully. Truth is, you guys don't even know what an extreme American bully is. The majority of you do, do not know. I, I see all kinds of posts, all kinds of comments, of co all kinds of things being said back and forth, and some truth, some not truth. So it's a big, it's a big fiesta. I want to break it down today. I want you guys to listen carefully because I'm going to explain it to, to you guys. An extreme has five elements, five, all right? And I'm going to tell you the fives, and then I'm going to break down the five elements. The first one, he has to be wider than he is tall. The second one, he should have muscular mass, not fat. Okay? That one's very important. Number three, he should carry good bone. Okay? Large bone. Number four, he should have a large head. And number five, he should be proportioned from front to back and all around. These are the five elements. Okay? So, let me explain it one more time and break it down. The first one, the dog should be wider than he is tall. So, for example, if the dog is 14 inches tall, he should be at least 14 and a half wide. That's very minimal. That's barely making the extreme class, but it, it should be the least. Um, the dogs we have here are at least an inch and a half to two inches wider than they are tall. We try to, we try to go at least one inch, but inch and a half to two inches or more is, is, is what you want. Sure, you got dogs that's being stuck at 14 inches and 19 inches wide, which is extremely, extremely wide. But because they carry such a large head and substance, muscular substance on them, it all fits together. So, of course, you want to go as wide as you can. You want to push the dog as far as you can without it falling apart. That's what the extreme is all about. Now, so wider than tall, I explained height versus width. There's a video of us measuring the dogs. On one of our episodes on YouTube, you can go back and look for it, and you can see us measuring King Kong. You'll get his true numbers. Um, at, you know, when he was, he was obviously a little bit younger, but you'll get his true numbers, and you'll get to see how it's done. And you, I showed how to pick up tools at a hardware store to measure, to make it easy and accessible to anyone in one day. Number, number two was the um, muscular mass. A lot of you guys' dogs look like tubes. Can't tell where the shoulders begin, and where the waistline ends. Um, if your dog's not tapered and back out, I don't care how much he weighs. It doesn't mean anything to me. Your 90 pound could be really 80 pounds, okay? So your 80 pound could be really 70 pounds. I don't know, it could be 75 pounds. It depends, depends on the height of the dog, obviously. So, so I don't know what that is until your dog doesn't have fat on him, all right? That's very, very important. So you guys emphasize so much on the body pound of the dog and you guys forget that is that lean mass or is that bulk mass because if he's bulked it means nothing it means nothing because that's a gene a lot of you guys have it a lot of big name breeders have dogs that when they eat they gain weight fast quick they put a lot of fat on see muscle tone dogs don't put fat on you could feed them quite a bit of food they'll put some substance and muscular substance on but they won't put fat on they'll never look like tubes you won't see them it's very rare why because the gene that produces dogs that put fat on, you see it very often in English Bulldog, for example, is not a gene that is healthy or is gonna allow the dog to live a long time. So I don't want it in my pool. I don't breed for it. So when I see that, when I see someone who has that in their bloodline or in, in the background, not in bloodline, in, but I would say in, in, in some of the pedigree, I don't breed to it. I don't want that ever haunting me, okay? There's a reason Magoo's 15. There's a reason Magoo got, I mean, Kaza made it to 13 and Bean is 12 years old, and Apollo is 10 years old, and, and uh, Claude is 14 years old, and uh, Bison is 13 years old. There's a reason. There's, there's a reason all, all our main big extreme big name grand champions and champions are living over a decade. It's because we have the right formula to make sure that we push the dog as far as we can without falling apart and kept it healthy. So yeah, I do not want that gene. So if your dog is fat, number one, that's a gene I don't want to breed for. Number two, that does not make him an extreme. It just makes him a fat dog, okay? So he has to be tapered in. So muscular mass, not fat, all right? That is extremely important. That's number two. Number three, bone. 
Your dog should have bone, but that does not mean that the dog's bone, the dog cannot move where he paddles when he walks or his shoulders do this because the rotation and displacement of his skeleton is out of place, okay? So yes, that when I say the dog should be wider than tall, it includes the proper skeleton formation. And when I say the dog should have bone, that bone should not be affecting the cartilage in the joints so that it doesn't affect the movement. The dog should still be able to move. So yes, big bone, but the proper type of bone. And he should have bone all around. If he has big bone in the front, he should have big bone in his ankles in the rear. You know, he should not just have big bone in the front. I've seen that, which is weird. The dog with massive bone in the front and little tiny little ankles in the back. Usually that comes from hip issues. The dog's not building enough muscle and he has a deterioration or some sort of um, dystrophy of the, in the skeleton where it's just tearing it apart. That again is a gene that is very harmful and very painful to dog in a later age. Something you don't want to breed for. You see it, shy away from it. All right, number four, large head. Yes, the dog should have a large head. What does that mean? Okay, if your dog's 12 inches and he's got a 23 inch head, that's a massive head, guys. That's a massive head for 12 inches, 11 inches. That's a massive head. 11 inches, 10 inches, you got 22, 21 inch head. That's a massive head. You guys are so fixated on 25, 26, 27. But most of you don't even have those numbers. And those who do, your dogs are over 18 inches tall. That's not a big head anymore. That's just a normal size head for that size dog. A large head would be a 26, 27 on a 14 to 15 inch dog, okay? I, over here, our, all our dogs are 14 to 15, 13 to 15, I should say, um, for our pockets, especially the males. So our pockets are 13 to 15. Most of them are under 15. So 14 is our goal. That's our, our key number. So, so for us, 26, 27, 28 inch head is considered huge and gigantic. That's what Nemesis carries and that's what Beanstalk carries. Uh, King Kong has a 26 inch head. A little smaller than the other two, but that isn't a good size head. But when I say a large head, it goes to now number five, the fifth element. He has a large head. He has large bone. He's wider than he's yeah. He has um, muscular mass, not fat, and wider than he is tall. But number five brings it all together. They should be proportioned. His head should not look too big. Where you see him, say, "Damn, that's a big head." No, no, no. When you look at the dog, you should say, "Damn, that's a big dog," because everything is proportioned. You don't get the illusion of the head being too big. When you measure it, it is. But when you first look at the dog, everything fits. A good example uh, of that, and we're gonna use someone outside of my yard, is seven. Seven is a good example of that. His head is huge. I measured it, it's 26 inches. But it's proportioned to his body. Would I consider him extreme? For our standard, he's right there on the extreme line. Um, we want to go a little wider, especially with the pocket, being that they're shorter, and we want to go with bigger heads and all of that, you know, on a shorter frame dog. But the idea is there. The idea is there. The dog has to be proportioned. The head should match the body. The rear should match the front. So the shoulder should be as wide as the rear. So when I took videos of King Kong, for example, or Beanstalk or Apollo from the top, you guys can see that the rear and the front are the same, okay? Their stance are the same here and here, all right? And then you can still see that the chest drop is down low and widespread, so it has a large area for the chest. Think of Arnold Schwarzenegger um, on stage. Huge wide chest, massive shoulders, big biceps, right? That's what you want. So you want that Arnold Schwarzenegger front, but you want the rear to be like Phil Heath's rear. Just massive big legs to match the front. So all that's important, but you want the head to be proportioned to that body, not bigger than the body. All right, and not smaller than the body. So all of that combined together, and if you follow this formula properly, that dog should become an extreme dog. Now, outside of the five elements that makes an extreme, what is the main goal? Well, the sixth thing is, that is not part of the element of building an extreme, but to us at Muscle Tone, is mandatory. The dog should breathe properly, move properly, and be healthy in all aspects, okay? Heart checked, hips checked, eyes checked, everything, palate, all of that. Everything should be right. Everything should be correct. Now we have a specimen. So when we say Mustone's King Kong is the greatest example of extreme ever, it's not our biggest dog. King Kong can't stand with his dad, Beanstalk. Beanstalk's shorter and wider and a bigger head. Can't stand next to Nemesis, he'll smash him. Can't stand next to Yuki. Can't even stand next to Titan. But none of those other dogs 
are all around perfect, or as close to perfection, I should say, as King Kong. So when I say King Kong, is the greatest example of that. That's what I mean. It's a dog that can move. He can run extremely fast. He can jump. He can, I mean, don't get me wrong. All the dogs can do that we have, but not, not in the agility King Kong does it. His breathing is unbelievably clean and clear. Again, all our dogs can breathe clearly. That's something that we, 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 ha we, we breathe for. Um, but he's also structurally put together better. He has tighter feet, tighter ankles, better everything all around, yet it's still an extreme dog. He's 14 inches, 14 and a quarter to be exact, you know, and he's 83 pounds, 26 inch head, and everything fits. He has bone and he's proportioned. And we tell you 83 pounds, you've seen King Kong at the shows, you've seen our videos of King Kong, you can see three of his ribs, sometimes four of his ribs. He is lean. Can we get King Kong to 86 pounds? Probably, but then he'll look like a tube. And it would be really, really hard to do because my dogs don't carry a gene that puts weight on easy. So, well, he, they put on more muscle. So the chances are of getting him to look like that, it'd be really difficult. Can it be done? I'm sure it can be done if you stuff the dog and don't give him any exercise, but it, it, why? It's so unhealthy and it's, that's not what we breed for. So keep in mind, guys, that is what's important right now, is to understand the five elements to make an extreme and go to number six, which is not one of the elements, but the number six is what gives you the perfect dog, or the closest thing to the perfect dog. Is it all of these together, yet the dog has to be able to be as healthy as can be in all aspects. So now that I've uh, described the extreme for you guys, I hope you guys have a better idea and an understanding of what the extreme class is supposed to be. And I hope there's no more confusion out there. It does not mean a messed up dog. It does not mean an, uh, a dog that can't walk or can't move. No, no, no. That's called brute stock, okay? Some dogs are brute stock. Can they be extremely extreme in substance and massive? Yes, they're brute stock. But the goal, the goal to producing the right extreme, you guys have to think King Kong. Before King Kong, we had Casablanca and Mr. Bean. Those were the closest three examples of extreme. King Kong is the closest because he's Casa and Bean put together. Um, the faults I had in each one were taken away in King Kong. So, so that's the closest. Can we better? Of course. That's what we breed. There's always something to better. We keep moving forward. All right, guys, any questions? You guys know how to reach me. We'll see you guys next week at the next episode. We have a great episode coming up for you guys uh, with a surprise guest. So we'll see you guys next week.